Hey, how's it going everyone? Just want to do a summary video. So I was on this uh, non sequitur show last night and honestly a little bit surprised that they would have me based on, you know, the content on my channel, but a huge credit to them, you know, for extending the invite to me. Um, knowing, you know, really nothing about me except that I would kind of um, get in their in their chat uh, boxes once in a while. So, you know, it was good. I um, was uh, up against uh, you know, gentlemen from uh, in in Europe, I believe, and um, you know, for me, uh, I, I'm not like um, I, I didn't come with the with what a lot of people are doing right now in experiments and observation, which is great. You know, I think that that's obviously been uh, I've benefited from it tremendously, and I'm very thankful for people really on both sides actually putting forward effort to do that. Um, you know, it's like almost like a buffet. You you can kind of go and you know you obviously have to be careful when you announce like uh you know analyze it look at it critically but you know there's a lot out there and it's obviously not going to stop clearly unless something major happens but um so i i come more from like kind of conceptual route this is just the way i am and and i feel could be my very very small but um you know maybe interesting um contribution so you know, I just posted a video resume again, just uh, definitely not to boast because again, if you know my channel, I, I basically feel like I've been indoctrinated and lied to my whole life. And I'm slightly bitter about that, maybe more than slightly, but um, so it's more just like if someone asks, you know, and says, well, you need to take a high school class, you're, you're dumb or whatever, I'll just send them to that as a starting point that obviously a lot of people can acquire degrees and stuff and not be brilliant. There, there's ways of getting it, but it's just a starting point, so we don't have to um, go over that. And then I just want to be transparent um, because it's a very practical thing, too. And I think it's an important thing anyway, um, especially if I'm sharing, like, you know, even biblical truths and spiritual stuff. Going to school doesn't make you spiritual or anything, but in many ways, in my opinion, it's actually designed to sort of despiritualize. But just I put it up there just as a form of like verification, you know, that I'm a human being. I, I've, you know, gone through these institutions, um, made it out alive and um, uh, it's it's there, you know, and, I, and I'm very open about that. Um, and uh, it, it is important because there's a lot of people with a lot of different opinions out there and you have no idea, um, you know, if this is something new for them or, or like what. Uh, their background is or what their intent is and all that so intent is very difficult obviously to prove but um, this is easy to prove these kind of things so i uh, kind of taking the you know the the low-hanging fruit and just um you know presenting that at least that part that i can prove easily um about you know my educational background and standardized test score so it it does uh it did uh it's it's interesting though, just and it's not surprising for me. Like just reflecting on it, it's just a lot of um, emotion. You know, I think is the best way to say it. I, I didn't leave that intellectually um, stimulated. Um, a lot of it is just because people are really big on videos, images, and and that's the kind of proofs and observations they're doing, which is what you know we largely have access to, which is kind of the only thing we have access to. And that's just, honestly, it's just not kind of, it doesn't like interest me at this point, just because, like I said, I'm, I'm starting with sort of the foundational elements. And if I'm stuck at the foundational elements, I, I'm not going to enjoy or be interested in, in anything going further, because to me, it'll be a waste of time. And so um, in order for me to go and disprove the ball, I would need to start, you know, with pen and paper. But um, so that that's it's it's a lot of emotions and stuff, and I think that this is where um, you know the, the 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 whole debate to me can like um, it, to me the the baller side it's just it's just not a good strategy with it that they're employing is like uh, immediately like you're dumb you know you're not you're not smart like you I, I even got quizzed by somebody about an electric, electrical circuit question on air. I graduated in undergrad 2004, where I actually had circuits courses. And then I went to Rice and did a master's in electrical engineering and mostly statistics-based courses 
in 2007. So like 11 years removed from engineering education. And then I worked as an engineer for over three years uh, as a software engineer. But so that, that I thought was, I mean, to me, that's, that doesn't really um, help uh, in any way because, you know, I, I understand people have to, um, you know, verify that, that you're at least a minimum intelligent. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, with that question and, and other ones, but it didn't actually, what I was presenting was not really rocket science, you know, and, I, and I'm going to talk about that in another video that I'm about to post, but it did bring up a very important um, point that I want to, you know, use myself as an example, even with all these quote unquote academic accolades, you know, it's like the education system is, is, a, is a complete joke and, I, and I'm I hope that no one really actually uh, thinks, you know, otherwise, like it's um, in the very least, it's a financial scam that's becoming mainstream news. <laughs> so when it hits like CNBC and Fox and like they, they they're, you know, they're pundits and they're, uh, they're people sitting on their uh, around the table start thinking, hmm, like, yeah, maybe maybe we are in a bear market, you know, maybe our economy is slowing down when they start saying that it, it's been slowing down for a while. And like when they start saying, is a college education really worth it? it's not really worth it. <laughs> you know, it's like, they're, they're always like 10 years behind. And so we've been in a bear market, uh, absolutely atrocious economy for at least 20 years, because we've just been feeding money into tech companies and garbage technology that is so far removed from a person's basic needs that only those people who um, are using and interested in those things and profiting from those short term investments, which is what they are, um, will benefit. And that's, that's what we've seen, you know, like all the, all the quote unquote rich people are people who are involved in technologies that not only don't help people, but some of them actively work to, um, uh, dumb down, you know, or, um, hurt people, you know, in, in, on many levels. And so, uh, again, I've done a lot of stuff on that on my channel, but so, you know, this is it, the, the financial scam I hope is, uh, is obvious. Uh, if anybody is just being honest, in Canada, we were lucky that our education is, is much cheaper than most educational places here, higher, higher, higher forms of education, but it's still expensive, you know, and you're, um, and it's okay, in my opinion, to spend money to go to school, obviously, but you're basically not taught anything, you know, and this is the point that I want to make in this short video and, and kind of my takeaway from the non sequitur show is that it's fine. Like I deserved it in many ways because like I was obviously puffing my chest, all these degrees, this and that. But I needed to do that just so, you know, the people there would would pick me out from like a group of anybody like, you know, I could have been just some random person off the street. So they can't just have like random people come up on their show and start talking about vectors and uh, fields and um, gravity forces, direction, all these kind of things. Right. So like that's that's fair. You know, I, I knew I knew that I was. Uh, going to get that and, and I, I was fine with it. And uh, the way I the way I want to even redeem, you know, the, the stuff that I, I'm not up to and, and, and aware of, or I f forgot, um, or most likely I haven't been taught because not again, this is not to boast, uh, but I actually I am the type of person that when a concept sits in my brain, uh, just like really everybody, I guess, but like me more that a concept that I, that is explained to me well, I will start using it and thinking about it in other in other parts of my life. And I will use it as a way to explain things and understand things like when I understood uh, and it was taught to me very well, the concept of like mutual information and um, just information quantified in general, the way it's done, you know, in uh, in electrical engineering and in particular, the way like um, it's done in uh, communication systems, which is a big focus at Rice, like that concept of information being encoded, encoded and uh, you can quantify it based on the uncertainty of the source that you're trying to quantify. And like the more kind of randomness or uncertainty, it actually requires more information to describe that, uh, that system or that distribution. And that, that, that concept, obviously, we, we took it further and described, you know, a lot of different things with that understanding. But that concept to me, one of, you know, I would hope the many that I've learned throughout my life, it's very important because and I, I actually find that interesting because it's it, it actually applies to real life because if someone keeps saying the same thing over and over and over again and you have a distribution that uh, or a signal that's just sending the same information over and over again, like if you just keep sending the number one, 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 
that actually, from an information theoretic point of view, actually has zero information. It has zero entropy, and so it has zero information. And so, to me, that's a little bit of what we're getting from the baller side. To me, it's like I don't understand why the guy felt so, um, you know, and this is not a personal shot to him, but like, they, they really feel like they need to evangelize. It's like, I'm not, you know, physically harming anybody. You know, it's like I told them I'm building everything up from first principles and I'm, uh, I'm not moving past uh, gravity right now because it's, it doesn't make sense. And, and check out my video that I'm about to post uh, why. It's, it's nonsensical, it's not physical, and um, it's not mathematical. So they're, they're, they're losing on, on all fronts, in my opinion, and I don't observe it. I don't see it. Uh, I don't need it to ex explain why things are falling down. To me, that's a natural law. Um, so that's, a, that, that's, that's bad because in my opinion, like the information theoretic example, it's like if you keep saying the same thing over, like you're dumb, you, you need to take a high school course in like uh, science or, or whatever, it's like that, that starts to like, it definitely encodes zero information. And in fact, it makes it more likely that, that we're onto something because no one would respond like that. Like if, if I have the truth, like if I knew for 100% certainty that, um, that something is true and, um, you know, like the earth is a ball, uh, you know, obviously I would debate passionately, which, which I like, you know, I think that that's fantastic. Uh, why hold an opinion loosely that that doesn't make sense in anything in life I, I don't do that and even golf like a, you know if I pursue and I play golf I always want to play it at the highest level sometimes it makes it not fun but that's what I do and then so same thing with this it's like I, I get the passion but it's like I wouldn't be worried that um that they're gonna get like um market share so to speak like I wouldn't think that they're encroaching on anything it's like eventually it will get found out like like i said in the actual presentation like it's going to get sought out like there's going to be a proof there's going to be an evidence with the technology with all the stuff that's going on there's no way like there's literally no way with how much technology is out there and um it, it's just even if the world was filled with purely only evil people it still would get figured out <laughs> you know it's like but that's not the case you know i do think that there are goodwilled people on both sides and that will not change. And, um, you know, it's like, cause, cause it's like, you cannot argue it like now, nowadays, it's not like, Oh, someone told me this and that and that it's like a lot of things that we can reproduce in technology. Um, again, largely because in my opinion, the, the mark of the beast, the fabrication one day going into people's hands, um, all this technology is becoming cheaper and cheaper and more accessible. So it's like, would I right now, if someone posted a video that was known to be a valid proof of something, uh, whether curved or not curved, and they used twenty five hundred dollars worth of equipment to do it, and it was like undisputed on uh, on both sides, or you know, it as best as people would uh, would concede that it's extremely strong evidence, or you know, it could be actual proof. Like we we could get to that very soon, and it costs twenty five hundred dollars. I would drop twenty five hundred dollars immediately to know the answer. Like it's not even. First of all, that's really cool, you know, it's like then you can just move on from it from a very practical perspective, like you can just move on, you know, it's like, I guess if I already sort of knew um, and I was on the side of the person that did it, there would be no reason for me to reproduce it. But, um, you know, I still I still would actually I mean, I think, yeah, actually, I would either way, like it would be it would be very interesting and um, just just to have, you know, for my own experience, you know, and then it's, it's a very, you know, um, important sort of um, building block for, for whatever, you know, just understanding our surroundings. It's a very powerful thing. So this is, this, this is will come out like it's, it's not like, a, it's not a big deal. So like them saying you don't have a model yet and all this kind of stuff. To me, it just, it just shows like that there's something else going on here. You know, it's like me posting a video and getting trolled by like 100 people. For me, it, at this point right now, it's beneficial for me because I'm learning, you know, and I'm forced to kind of think and people are saying, oh, did you think about this? And moon faces I've never thought of in my life. I've never taken a astronomy class because there, there was never one offered. I'm surprised, actually. I had a close friend years ago who taught that in high school here in Houston. And I'm like, I'm surprised they even teach that in high school because if people start getting curious and start asking, hey, where'd you get all these numbers? 20 million, 20 billion, zillion miles away, uh, all this kind of nonsense. Like, uh, I mean, 
what, what's, it, what's the average teacher going to say? You know, the, this guy was a little bit sharper maybe than the average high school teacher, but I mean, I, I would not want to be a high school science teacher right now, especially if people with my personality are sitting in those classrooms. Now, I would utterly devour, and I'm not saying this to be arrogant, but I would, I would literally devour every single one of my teachers if I went back to school right now, um, knowing even just like a little bit of what I know now. And it's not just flat earth and ball earth, it's everything. I would literally stop the class if, um, and this is what I wanted to mention in my uh, video resume, in electromagnetics, in, we have to take two courses in electromagnetics in our second and our third year. And in our second year, I got 100. Which, this is the hardest course in, in, the, in the undergrad program, in our, um, in our program at Western. Because the professor just comes in, no notes, just starts like writing stuff on the wall, you know. And he's a smart guy, like very nice guy too. Like, you know, I, I, I was in touch with him outside of um, after I graduated and stuff. But, you know, he just like, you know, Russian guy, kind of difficult to understand. He would come in, just write stuff. We had no idea if it was true or not. <laughs> like, I'll be totally honest. Like, I'm not saying he was like lying to us, but like we had no idea. Like he was teaching us all these like, you know, very complicated electromagnetic concepts and he was the one responsible for that chunk of our knowledge base i got 100 only because like i think he curved the scores because like people a whole bunch of people would have failed the class which they did fail some obviously but it's not like i knew 100 percent of that textbook um i think the textbook was was a brother from stanford two brothers iman and iman or inam and inan uh, inan and inan um, I literally remember the, the face of the textbook. Let me actually search for it just to bring back memories. Yeah, it's literally Einan and Einan, yeah. So I just, uh, I just did a quick search. That, that was our textbook. So that was our textbook, Engineering Electromagnetics. Umran, Ainan, and Aziz Ainan, and I remember that book because we would always look at it in horror because he would always schedule the exams after spring break too, and like people knew that he was doing it on purpose, so they it would ruin their spring break, and it certainly did. But um, you know, it's it's this is this is a problem in the in the education system. It's not just Western not picking on that school. I know for a fact it's a lot of them, if not all of them, to at least some degree. We were taking uh, almost 30 hours of classes a week. And my sister did a chemical engineering degree and she did sometimes with lab work and all that 40 or more, this is just hours in the classroom or in the lab. That is, that's preposterous, that, that's insane. That is slavery and uh, if, if anybody thinks that that's the, the right way to learn over the course of four years, uh, that, that person literally needs to be isolated. Don't, don't take that person seriously. Uh, that is ridiculous. Um, there is no way that um, any person can learn with like that. Uh, it's just li literally like um, a pressure cooker. Just throw somebody in and just see who can survive, sink or swim. That's it. That's madness, you know. And so that's what it was for us. We just had tons of classes. They were not, you know, like weaved together why we're taking them or whatever. We just take a bunch of classes, you know. And Western and in Canada in particular, under, uh, maybe it's changed now, but you had very little to no flexibility of the courses that you took. I think I took one sort of humanities course in my whole undergrad. It was like introduction to philosophy. <laughs> and then I, I'm pretty sure I got a low score because I emailed the professor, am I allowed to like reference God because I was going through like a religious phase and he didn't like that obviously, but that was my lowest score in, in my undergrad um, experience. But um, it's, it's so rigid, you know, it's not broad. There's no like storyline behind it. We're just sur trying to survive, you know, and, um, that, that that's 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 where I'm at you know I think that that's why I mentioned in the presentation you know I'm I, I can take tests you know like I've learned how to do that um, I call it slurp and burp which is what we call it in high school which is what it is you know but along the way just or just naturally from even before high school like I was good at math I, I still I even in grade six I won the highest I won the proficiency award so like I will and it's not necessarily like brilliance it's just like I would be the like the person who was pretty good at math, so I had a kind of a, a little bit of a head start, and then I was I was extremely hardworking to the point where, um, not in grad school as much because it was a more laid back, but in uh, in undergrad and every every year up to undergrad, like I was just a, a 
like a robot when it comes to like um, performing well in school. It's like it was like a game literally for me. Like just it was like it was like golf, like trying to score low in golf but high in school. It, it was just like a it was like a game, and so it wasn't about learning creativity, intuition, understanding. I've made it more now, and, and in many ways this uh, this debate is helping me. You know, get down to those or approach a problem the way I should have, approach learning the way I should have years ago and stuff. So accounting and finance, I would say I'm, I'm much more intuitive. And when I pursued my CPA, I was able to reflect a little bit. But even during that, you know, you're studying for four exams, which are completely disconnected with the way accounting and finance work in real life. Um, you know, the, the, there's so much out there that's going on. That's the real way things work. But we just learned, um, you know, just point after point of stuff that is just absolutely overkill beating a dead horse such a simple field um conceptually is made into you know the most complicated set of exams just strictly to filter out people and and all that kind of stuff like people ask me tax questions to this day and i you know passed obviously the, the tax portion you know i i don't remember any of it like it's just a blur like you know it it and that's not the way it should be but that is the way it is and it's not just me you know and and i'm uh i'm not the anomaly you know you you can ask any person who's passed the literally right after they pass the exam you can even ask them like um explain to me like what how to compute the basis of a uh of a partnership or something you know it's like they'll be like leave me alone <laughs> you know you don't want to even talk about it much less like think that you understand what it really is and it's such a simple concept to whatever it is uh, it's not mathematically challenging you know accounting and finance uh, finance would use you know calculus to some degree but it's those that field which is which is one of the main things that I wanted to get into that because like you you're you're able to master it quicker um, than engineering and, and uh, science and physics and stuff which you know you can't you know um, there's always more to learn especially when you invoke chemistry and physics and stuff but so you know it's a major flaw you know in our education system this to me is by design we have been dumbed down um, in the classroom in um, in in religious places to me the, the classroom is really no different than um, church if, if you've gone to church or some other place where like you sit down you listen to somebody um, they tell you a bunch of lies and then you leave I bet you a, a majority of the Christian world 90 eight percent do not know that god is the author of good and evil i did not know that uh for for many years or i'm sure i've read it but i never like was taught it that that's literally true you know and, and it's obvious if you think about it common sense if god exists he's the author of all things he would be the originator but no like i would say a majority of christians do not know that they would not be able to know where to go in the bible to support that because there's many instances where that's you know made very clear and um you know, they just go in there, they sit down, we go in there and sit down and then we're taught something and then we leave and we're basically kind of like told just don't do these things. And then in school, it's kind of the opposite. You go there and sit down and then you're kind of told do these things or remember these things and come back and I'm going to like make sure that you do. And then um, uh, church is kind of like, like I said, the reciprocal of that. So there's a this this is very coordinated you know this dumbing down it's really everywhere in your family growing up right what questions are you allowed to ask you know like you're not i was born in a hindu family i wasn't allowed to talk about god freely and like ask questions and stuff everything is taboo like you can't talk about god like it's some curse word or something which is the way the whole vibration on the earth is right now so you know the the vibe in that um uh that debate show is no different than the vibe that i've I've experienced throughout my entire life. So it's it's really no different. And, and I'm getting comfort in knowing that it's pretty much everywhere now. So it's uh, it's not shocking. So, you know, I'm kind of playing along with this, but it's it was a good experience. And, um, you know, I do uh, I do think that, um, you know, I'll, I'll invest more time in this. I'm not going to do the debate stuff that much. Uh, I think for me right now, I need to keep, you know, posting videos and stuff. But um, try and go out and talk to people on the streets and I see a lot of people doing the street preaching with Flat Earth and I think that that's a powerful um, way to connect to people so that's going to be my next sort of thing that I pursue. I don't think I'm very useful honestly for these debates because uh, unless somebody wants to talk about gravity 
and uh, understanding it mathematically. Uh, I'm definitely open to those kind of discussions. So um, if you're a person who's inclined or has already figured it out, um, definitely let me know.